Welcome Capricorn, thanks for joining me for your January forecast for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol on the desktop version of YouTube. This month sees a stellar lineup of energy in your sign. It's really exciting. In some ways, it may seem a little daunting. So let's just see where the planets all are as you enter this new year. Perhaps most excitingly of all, Venus, the planet of love and affection, is in the sign of Aquarius, pointing towards some kind of return on all the hard work and graft that you've been investing over the last couple of years as your ruler Saturn has made its way through your sign and been asking you to slim down your world so it's just focused on the things and the strands that really matter. So if you started to feel better about yourself or your financial position revived, that would be very welcome. The moon is in the sign of Pisces, which is very much to do with your everyday communications, with your neighbours, with your siblings, to do with technology, and it's combining with Neptune. So your imagination is going to be hugely important around your emotional communication this month and this year. Mars, the planet of drive and individuality, is actually in a very sociable and cooperative part of your scope, Scorpio, which suggests you can retain your individuality but find ways to network with others. But you are definitely going to be at the heart of things. The Sun, of course, is in your sign as you enter this new year, and Jupiter, the planet of growth, is back in your sign for the first time in 12 years for a full year. Of course, it entered just back into your sign at the start of December last year, and it's going to be with you through to the 19th of December 2020. So this is a marvellous opportunity, and it's an opportunity for growth. Sure, Jupiter is in detriment in your sign, but if we think about it, Mars is in its home zone in Scorpio, and Saturn is in its home zone in Capricorn. So, even if you do have one of the key inner planets, not quite as you would like, now relocated into your sign, I think it's going to be a welcome counterpoint to the more restrictive energy that Saturn has brought to bear over the last couple of years. And as you start 220, Mercury, the planet of thought and talk, communication of commerce, is in your sign, and it's right beside Jupiter. So the two are encouraging you to think about how you can push forward with your individual agenda. You're someone who can be very stoic, very committed to the cause. You persistently keep going when others quit, and your forbearance is one of your greatest gifts. But it's important not to let that pulverise your passion. So if you have got an idea, a hobby you want to embrace, an approach that is a bit more radical, fresh and different for you, then do take it seriously as this year begins, because you could have a real stroke of fortune from it, particularly as these two are angling up perfectly with Uranus, the planet of change, the planet of independence, the planet of restlessness, the planet of freedom, and of course the planet that rules astrology. And if you have been feeling that you do want to shake up your world, and that probably became much stronger from March the 7th last year, then that wouldn't be a surprise. There may have been an echo of it that went back to the year before then as well. But as you get into this year, feeling that you, the individual, is validated by the people that you connect with is very important. And therefore, you may find yourself in a situation where you're asking yourself, do I compromise enough and bend to some of the will of others or what the expectations are or what the structures are that are already laid down? Or can I live within the other way it's done 
and coexist by being still an individual? Or do you need to just break out completely and take centre stage and really start to flourish and be in that sole role of the leader, which of course you are as a cardinal sign, and really go forwards this year in a much more dynamic way? Now, Mars is going to be moving on the 2nd into a rather tender zone for you, the uh, 12th solar house. It's possible that someone from your past, it could be an old employer, an old business contact, it could be someone you just had huge amounts of respect for in your past, someone who may be taught at college, or just the memory of someone like this. They can be so inspirational in the next six weeks, particularly if you do encounter any inner blockages or you feel inhibited in seizing the moment when this very enriching uh, uh, set of influences is shaping up in your sign. This person can be a key player for you. But equally, you may find that some past hurts and difficulties start to come into your psyche much more powerfully. And if that's the case, you must articulate these. It's going to be very important for your emotional health. This moves us to the seventh when Jupiter is connecting with uh, a very sensitive point, the south node. This is the karma where you're coming from. If you're someone who's been very orientated over the last kind of year towards how other people are thinking about you or their needs, this is kind of saying to you, have the confidence to embrace what you need to do for you. Also, we are seeing at the start of this year, the sun broadly in touch with Jupiter, which can give you a sense of positivity, even though you can be a very cautious person and therefore uh, very aware of your responsibilities and sticking to the program, uh, not quitting, staying on track which, with whichever longer term goal you've got. Uranus is there calling out to you all the time saying, check it out. Does it feel like you're enjoying it? Is it enlivening you? It's not just about being dutiful. It's about what you get from it personally. Is it feeding your soul? Is it making it enjoyable? And that's going to be critically important too. That brings us to the annular lunar eclipse of the 10th in your opposite sign. You may find that you could encounter some opposition over the next six months if you do decide to change something that has a big impact on you, but maybe has an impact on others as well. But sometimes we really do have to follow our hearts. And that may be something that doesn't come up for you personally. It could do. Perhaps it's a relationship where you could just be reminded by a partner to stay conscious of their needs. But I think the moon being in Pisces at the very start of this year is going to see you quite nimble when it comes to communication. The difficulty was with Neptune side by side with the moon. At times, you may feel a bit confused about what you should be saying or who you should be discussing things with. There could be a sense of, of muddle. But the only way you can overcome this is in your inimitable way of stripping it all down to the basics and being really clear about what you essentially need to achieve, expressing that fairly and clearly to those that count. And those that really love you will climb on board, get behind you, understand that this is a phase you have to take very seriously for you, or there will be people who will spin out of your world. But I think then we have that cluster, that stellium of energy, the sun, Mercury, Ceres, the asteroid of nurture in your sign alongside Saturn and Pluto. Saturn, of course, has been in your sign for the last couple of years. It could be argued that if you are a, a very uh, a typical uh, a Capricorn person, that you've been able to deal with its um, strict uh, overtures and demands better than most people. But it just depends on what personal planets you have along with the Sun. For example, if you've got also Saturn in Capricorn too, you get in a double whammy. If you've got Mercury there, 
it could be limiting your thinking a little bit. If it's got Venus there, impinging on relationships. So Saturn moving through this area is no joke. But I do feel that once you get through this critical point and the 18th of February, when Saturn speeds up and starts to head off towards its transition to Aquarius in March, it reverses back into your sign on the 1st of July before leaving for Aquarius on the 14th of December. But it's only going to be nibbling into Aquarius, but it is picking up speed. So if your planets are certainly in the middle part, the middle decan of Capricorn, you'll be glad once uh, Saturn starts to gain greater traction. But I think this is a, a point, a time in the stand when you have to think, what is life about? What do I really want to achieve? Am I being dominated by some kind of conditioning, which means I always have to do what my parents feel, or I always have to do what the orthodox way of doing things uh, demands? Is it that I'm a natural rule follower? Or is there part of you that's always wanted to break out, even in an independent, individual way, or in a creative way, or in a professional way? If there's some part of you that's not really found its voice, found its true vocation, this is an enormous opportunity to redefine the rest of your existence because it's not going to come around again, this particular collection of energy, anytime soon. It's that rare. But of course, your natural caution could see you trying to hedge your bets, see where things go, stick rather than twist, and that would be entirely understandable. Only you can make that decision. But if you do really want to finally define you and march to the sound of your own drum, not the sound of the drum that everyone else demands that you march to, this can be a fabulous opportunity. With Venus moving on the 14th into Pisces, your communicational skills can increase. Now, Mercury moves out of your sign and into Aquarius on the 17th. The Sun uh, the same on the 21st. There's a new moon also on the 24th. And this is all asking you to see practical evidence of getting something back for all the hard work and application that you've shown. But it's also about how you feel about yourself. I have to say also from the 13th through to the 24th, Mars and Jupiter forge a very positive link. So Mars in that 12th solar house is linking with Jupiter in your sign. So that, again, could be past skills, knowledge, contact, can have an impact in reshaping how your outlook is developing now. Quite a critical link. But Mars does square with Neptune in the last week of this month. And if there is any confusion, and there is something that you need to discover, especially around someone's sincerity, if you're unsure about someone's probity or perhaps their faithfulness, Mars square in Neptune is trickster combination bar none. So just be conscious that you could encounter someone who's entirely dishonest, not a straight player, or it may be that you need to confront some part of an existing situation. And the only way to do it is chop it all down and be ruthlessly demanding about getting to the detail of it. Don't be fobbed off by anyone's half stories or half truths. That's crucial as this month comes to a close. But generally, January 2020 Capricorn is one of the most precious months you will ever encounter in your life. It's really down to you how you react to the power of the planets. If you'd like to know what 2020 would hold for you as an individual, based on your time, date and place of birth, please see the link beneath this video. You can order your 12-month forecast and get 30% off. But for now, good luck and goodbye.